Founded by Ebenezer Alto at the turn of the century, Bridgeport was once a busy shipping town, inhabited by sailors and smugglers. However, when the film industry came to the city, celebrities, simoleons, and the sparkling lights of fame took over. Now a vibrant city with an energetic nightlife and a bustling club scene, Bridgeport has made its mark on the map. But are the builds as stylish and popular as the sims that inhabit them? What's up guys, Rakowski here. And today, we're going to be judging and rating the builds in The Sims 3 Bridgeport. Before we get started, if you enjoy content on the older Sims games, don't forget to like this video and please, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much. Also, let me know in the comments down below what your favorite world in The Sims 3 is. There's still many more to cover, and you guys are in control as to what we do next. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Well, welcome back to The Sims 3, everybody. Here we are in the beautiful world of Bridgeport. This is one of my favorites. I'm really excited to get this one started. You guys actually picked this one because I usually just ask for comments, what world should we do next? But as it became more popular, I'm getting too many suggestions. So we're just doing like polls and you guys can vote on whichever world you wanna see next. So if there's one I haven't done, make sure to leave a comment on which one you wanna see. But enough of that stuff, let's get into this. I love this world. It's based off of like a big city, of course. A lot of people assume it's based off of New York City City, but it was never based off of New York. That was confirmed by The Sims. In my opinion, it's kind of coastal. It looks very West Coast. Most of the cities are kind of West Coast inspired anyway. So this really reminds me of Vancouver here in Canada. But one thing to note about this world is that it has 30 occupied lots. So we have to jump in right away and get started. And I do want to note that for the apartments in this, I'm going to be putting less emphasis on the exterior because that's more like the graphical design department. And I'm going to be putting more focus on like the style and if they relate to the sims that live there. Okay, enough of that stuff, let's jump in. First up is Air Spray. So these sims, it's like a washed up Karen and her famous daughter. So it's kind of an interesting storyline. The house isn't a super bold house for being like a ritzy kind of mansion style, but I don't think it's an eyesore. I think it looks really nice. I kind of like how the shadows hit it when I'm out of the way of the tree there. There's not too many windows. They could have perhaps used a more statement window at the front. It's just a bit boring and basic. You know what I mean? Oh, wait a minute. Never mind. I see something interesting. So we have the stilts here at the back, which is making great use of the terrain. I love this. Normally, I would not be this ambitious. I would just build at the front and just leave the back like blank and forget it that it, that it even exists. The size is pretty good too. I really love this kind of bluish color. So I really hope that continues throughout. So let's jump inside and see. Oh, wow, they did use it. They use this the same way that they use the baby poo green. Once you get a little bit of it, they just put it everywhere. So at least we have a good color kind of splashed around. I like the kitchen. I just think it's too big for this. They should have put more stuff in it. I know it's supposed to be a mansion, so then it should be big. This furniture is like 19th century Victorian furniture. So in my opinion, it doesn't really fit well with the house. And this bookshelf I hate is obviously in the house because it's an EA build. The dining room has the same problem. It's like this like old Victorian styles, but inside of this big empty open concept mansion. Okay, moving upstairs, they continued that same color scheme and style, which I really appreciate. I even see the color on this, on this railing here by the stairs. That is a really nice detail. I'm down for that. But the furnishing, again, it's too old fashioned and too empty and spread out. Like I know it's a Sims house, but this is a little bit ridiculous. See, the thing with this house is that it would be great to move your own Sims into because since it isn't super full, you could add skill building items and things that suit the Sims personality. But maybe it's because these Sims don't have any personality that there's nothing in there. I'm gonna give this house a 7.5. I could definitely play in this house. I would just add a few lights to the outside and just move out the Sims and move in my own. Next up is The Bachelor. I know I don't wanna to spend too much time on the exteriors. However, I will wanna point out that I love that they put a couple with these blue windows because it just adds a pop of color to the landscape. You can see most of the buildings don't have a lot of color and I'm glad they didn't choose like stupid ugly colors like they usually do. Yeah, so this Sim, he works as a secret agent, but he's also a player. So he's, I don't know. I think he's supposed to be like one of those like troubled single guys that you can fix. Hmm, I guess we'll have to see. It it has a bedroom and I don't think a bachelor apartment should have a bedroom. It should just be like one big open concept kind of thing, right? But the style of it is fine. Like it's just, 
it's very indicative of like a heterosexual player with no style. You know what I mean? Like this, this wall color, I'm not having much of that. Uh, the painting, I actually like the painting. It just doesn't go really well in this room, but it's just like very basic kind of bachelor masculine toned furniture and stuff you know one thing i really do like is the kitchen it's very efficient it's long and skinny i like those kinds of kitchens i've mentioned this before usually it's like this big oversized l in the corner like the last house oh my god that's creepy okay that's a nice little touch the telescope at the window i don't think he's looking at stars well he's probably looking at celebrity stars right the bedroom furniture is particularly hideous. I like the nightstands. That's about it. Uh, I don't like it as a dresser. I don't like this brown toned desk and computer chair. And I don't like this mirror at all. This is ugly as hell. I think that this mirror is very stylish. Anybody who would use this shape obviously has amazing taste. I wonder what that reminds you of. Well, for our first apartment, like I really wasn't blown away. This is just like, I think it suits the story. I think it's perfect for him. It's not something I wanna be a part of. I'm gonna give this one a five. It's just got too much of that straight guy style, you know? Next up is Beechwood Springs. So this is very old fashioned styled. I absolutely love it. It doesn't have a lot of color, but it doesn't need it. You know, like all of the details are in the architecture. Like you have these little columns, you have like the bump out parts here. You have all the details on the roof. And I just, I really appreciate it because it's hard to do something well when you can't really make it pretty. Oh, I was looking for his apartment, but he actually lives down here. That makes a lot more sense. I know he's supposed to be like low income, but I didn't expect him to be living in a garage. Love that they put this little like air vent at the top. I think that's extremely realistic and a really nice touch. What I don't like is these counters. I don't think they fit in with this at all. I don't think that you'd be able to get counters in this style in a garage this old. I think if anything, it would be like basic Ikea ones. But the furniture is like mixed styles. Like he got them from like a thrift store. So I really like that. There's not a lot to really talk about in this one because it's so small. I thought I would just come down to give it like a real view of where he lives because I thought he lived in the tower before. But it's really small and like it does kind of check all the boxes that we need for this kind of place. It's just a good idea. It doesn't really have any style. There's no place to put style. And you could have made it like really dingy if you wanted to go with this storyline. So I'm gonna give it a four. And in hindsight, these flower boxes, they don't make sense. Like this guy can barely afford lunch. What's he doing planting a garden like in his garage? Next up is Breach House. This is supposed to be like the oldest luxury apartment in the city. And it doesn't really give that vibe if I'm honest. It looks too modern to be like, old money and it looks not modern enough to be new money. I really appreciate how they didn't make any of the buildings like big and ugly and like stand out too much. That's something that like you'd expect from EA. But since this is supposed to be old money, I'm kind of scared that there's going to be like ugly green bathrooms like in all the old houses in the other worlds. So let's just jump in and see Ugh, a green kitchen. That's almost as bad. Oh, green here, green there. OK, let's get started. I'm just going to work my way across. So looking at the floor plan, this doesn't look very luxury at all. Like for old money, this is kind of ridiculous. Like why, why does everyone have single beds in like small bedrooms? These two are sharing a bedroom. I know it's a city, but come on. The parquet floor is exactly what an old apartment building would have though. So that's very accurate and realistic. The kitchen is absolutely hideous. I don't want to look at it anymore. You all know what I think about that. The dining room is actually not too bad. I really like this shade of brown. I think it goes really well together with like the carpet, but the walls, I don't like this wallpaper at all. I like how they switch it kind of at the line where the dining room is though. That's a nice detail. I just would have used different wallpaper, but the way they did it is nice. The columns are a nice touch. I love orchids. So there's an orchid there. I love that. The green marble on the tables. Hmm. This bedroom looks like it's in a totally different house. This looks like it's in like a small Victorian starter in the middle of like Riverview or something. I kind of like this color. I just don't know if I like this minty blue for this character because, you know, Jet looks more like the emo kind of teenager. So I would expect like black, dark violet, blood red, something like that. I would never expect mint. And looking at it from afar, you just don't really have a focal point. Well, like for me, it's the kitchen, but I know for regular players, it's just kind of like bleh, but like there's still elements of old style and they did some things right. I'm just, again, I don't understand the color choices that they're, that they're making in these worlds. 
I'm gonna give it a four as well. It's almost in three or two territory, but like I said, I really like the parquet flooring and I think they did a really good job. It's just that our styles do not coincide, you know? Next up is the Bridgeport Armory. So this house has a really funny story. It was actually filled with explosives in the past, but it was next to a bridge. So that wasn't very smart. So now poor people live here. Now the outside, mm, little basic and brown. It could use a little bit more breaking up. Again, nice architectural detail though. I like the sign on the side as well because that's realistic. You would have signs and billboards as you drove because everyone's driving on this bridge, right? So that, so that really makes sense. But we're not really here for that. So let's just jump inside and see what we get. Oh, that's the ugliest tile I've ever seen in The Sims that wasn't green. So I don't love that at all. Don't love this brown, don't love this blue, and I certainly don't love it with this yellow. Is this in the lobby too? Of course it is. Okay, let's just go back upstairs because the lobby isn't really, you know, the point of the build. It's more about the inside. The floor is hideous. It's got green tile here. At least the toilet and tub and stuff are not green. I'm happy about that. Now the bedrooms are quite basic. But that's kind of the point, right? Because it's three sims. At least they have double beds. See, the poor sims have double beds and the rich sims in the previous house, they didn't have double beds. So that doesn't make sense. This, this apartment is also bigger. And in a big city, size and location are priced. Like, the, like it, it could be destroyed inside. But if it's like over 500 square feet, it's like $3,000. Let's end off with the living room. I think it's great like for who these Sims are because they have a bar, they have a TV, they have a CD player. Like those are the things that they would prioritize, right? Because they're still young in their careers and stuff. Well, overall, the worst parts about this build are the things that I'm taking less into consideration, like the shell and like the lobby and stuff. Inside is all right. I got a few problems with it, but it does the job and it suits the Sims that it's created for. I'm gonna give it a six. Don't worry, I'm giving lower scores so far, but they're not angry low scores. They're just like, I expect more from apartments because these are things that I'm used to, you know. Next up is the Bridgeport Arms. So it has a similar name to the last apartment building. However, this one is nice. I mean, it's a little nicer. I think it's got a better color to it. But again, it's just got that basic shape. I don't think it's too different. It might be the exact same as one of the other ones that we've seen before. So this Sim, he left his family's farm. So he was supposed to go like work on the ranch forever, but he decided to come to the big city and try and make it. I like that they keep that storyline going from different backgrounds because I can really identify with that. So let's see if I can identify with this apartment. Oh, this is not what I was expecting, but I do like it. This is interesting. This is the style that I would expect from the one that said it was the old money rich apartment. This is the style. Like we got marble tiles. We have old school styling. We have like over decoration, over texture. So I'm really enjoying the vibe. When you first enter, the first thing you see is a chess table. Hmm, that's kind of elitist, isn't it? And then when you go right inside, it's like, bam, grand piano. I really like that. The layout's kind of funky. I like this like octagonal hallway. That's also very characteristic of like, for example, like an Upper East Side rich New York City apartment. The kitchen marble is stunning. Not my style, but I know this is some rich person's style. And it's kind of a good size for a small to medium kitchen. I don't think they overdid it. And I love how they use like a booth in the corner. That's very ritzy. The living room is very dark, very mysterious. And I don't know, like I just think overall, I love how the bathroom carries over the same, the same tiles and stuff. It's just, I'm vibing with this. This is this like, this is at least, even though this is not something that I would personally choose to like live in, it's got a very distinctive style. And you can tell that this guy likes the finer things in life. Yep, so far, this is the first one that's actually impressed me. I think it has a lot of great elements. They work really well together. It suits the sim, it suits the apartment building, and it suits the story. I'm gonna give this one a nine. I hope we see more good ones like this. Even look at the little wood detail. Like, that's something that like I don't usually even do. Next up is Celluloid Heights. Hmm, that's an interesting brick color choice. I don't hate this color. I just don't love it as a brick and I don't love it as like the whole house, right? It would have been good as like an accent if they use something else like a little bit more toned down for other parts. Like even this tile is more toned down. That would have been like a nice, a nice color choice. The pool is kind of cool too. I like how they like trimmed it with like a different tile. I think that's a nice little detail. Again, not my style, but at least they're putting some thought into it. I didn't know we were gonna find an old fashioned 
style house. And you know how much I love to rip apart these. So let's jump inside. Ah, oh, there's green wallpaper in every room. Every room. Okay, let's get started. Let's go into the kitchen that makes absolutely no sense. It has the same ugly green tiles that that one kitchen had that I didn't like. The fridge is green, the oven is blue. I always talk about this, blue and green do not go together, but the Sims team seems to think so. This dining room has no personality, nothing else other than a dining table. That's lazy as shit. Okay, this thing doesn't make any sense. Why is there a lamp in the middle? You would have it facing in if it's your house, right? Like you don't wanna face away from people. Like even if that's part of the story, doesn't make sense. These stairs are gross too. Actually, you know what? The stairs aren't that gross. It's just that they're gross next to the other colors. If, if these stairs were used in like an appropriate house, it might actually look good. Okay, coming upstairs, I really like this balcony detail. The architecture of this house is actually pretty good. I don't love all the details, but there's certain parts where I'm like, okay, I can get down with this. What I hate, other than this yellow bathtub, is that the bedroom, the, like the bed is in the small part of the bedroom, and this part's like another living room. It doesn't make any sense. What's over here? Oh my God, this is a princess bedroom. The basement is the nicest hidden detail. Down here, it's like super dark. It almost looks like where you would go to like hire somebody for, um, indiscretions. The worst part about this house is that it's on the right track. It's a decent shape. It's like decent architecture. It's just when you get into the styling and the colors, it just completely falls apart. Like why would you put green everywhere again for me? But there's some good elements too. I love the architecture as a whole. It's just mm, the roof isn't great now that I'm looking at it too. I'm going to give this one a five. Yeah, we're not getting any extreme scores yet. Next up is Cliff Cottage. This house took me forever to find because I was looking for a cottage on the cliff, not a modern mansion overlooking the ocean. So zero out of 10 for the name, but the shape is all right. Like it's it's a little basic. They might have over windowed a tad, but nothing like stands out as like, oh my God, look at that. And you can kind of see into the house through the windows and I don't see green wallpaper yet. So that's always a plus. Okay, let's jump in. The first detail I notice is that there's like an entry hall where the staircase is. That's a nice detail. They haven't really been doing that too much. They've been kind of making the entry room also one of the main rooms like the kitchen or like the living room or something. Okay, let's look at the dining room. Again, literally nothing else except for a dining table. I don't know how I feel about that. This bathroom is too big and there's nothing in it as well, but at least it's not green. I kind of like the darker toilet and tub. That's something you see once in a while. The kitchen, I'm glad it has the same counters as the bathroom. The, why just the two cabinets here? The foosball table is a nice bachelor touch and the arcade machines. That's something I would never have a foosball table, but I would definitely have arcade machines and video game stuff. Oh, once again, I wasn't blown away. They're not furnishing these enough. There's not enough style. There's not enough like accent furniture. Like these dining rooms, what are they thinking? but it's a decent shape and it does kind of suit the sim. So we'll give this one a six. I would really appreciate just like a bold sense of style at this point. Like even if I don't like it, just give me like a bright pink wall or something. Next up is Crib. First off, this is the best modern house that we've seen so far. I think the front is very dynamic. I love the columns. I love the amount of windows and where they're placed. And it's got some funky shapes to it, but it's not too over the top where it looks unrealistic. The back has that same detail over the cliff that I really liked in the other house, but it's just done better. It could use a little pop of color too. Like I said, the modern houses in The Sims 3, they seem to be like mostly white. And I usually like to do like mostly white, but also like an accent color or like black accents or just something to break it up a bit. But I shouldn't get too picky. This is the best we've seen. So let's just jump inside. Ugh, I hate when they do this. It's like a half bath but with a double sink and mirror, like I don't think that makes any sense. The fountain is beautiful though, and I like how they have the statue being illuminated. That's a really nice detail too. The dining room furniture, I love this like wood color. It's almost red, like it's like a, it's like a, it's like a hint of rose inside of wood. The color scheme so far, oh, never mind. I saw a green kitchen. We may as well pop upstairs here. Oh my God, a blood red bathroom. I was not expecting this. Red is like my favorite color. However, there is a time and a place for red and I don't think it's this bathroom. Wow, look how tacky this is. Oh, it's so tacky, but I love it. I love this zebra print piano. That is something rich celebrity people would have for sure. 
That's more what I'm talking about. These couches don't make any sense. The red goes well with the leopard print. I like that, but I don't know how I feel about the candles and the fact that it's Victorian furniture again. Love the little detail on the side of the TV though. That's kind of cute. So this was my favorite so far. I'm really impressed. I like the Sims. I like the shape. I like the style. I don't love all the styles inside, but those are things you can change really easily. And the architecture and stuff is already really well done. And that's the stuff that's a pain in the ass to renovate. I'm going to give this house a nine. You know, if this wasn't a red bathroom and if these couches weren't here, it might've gotten a 9.5 or a 10. Wait a minute. Never cut. I found a green bathroom. I didn't notice earlier. Hmm. Forget the nine. We're giving this an eight. Next up is Founders Keep. So this shell is basically the same as some of the other ones we've seen, so we won't talk about it. But I will talk about the fact that this is our first vampire. He's evil. He has the emperor of evil aspiration. He looks evil. He's got the vampire eyebrows, right? So let's see if his build reflects that. First off, love the red carpet in the hallway here. That is something that I would love. Walk down a red carpet every day. And coming in, the first thing I notice is that he has uh, somewhere to sleep that would be for a vampire. So that's a nice little detail. In The Sims 4, a lot of the houses just had beds. That was kind of weird. Now, the bathroom. I like how they use like stone tile because that's kind of more vampire-y. I think that's a nice touch. I don't think they would use like a porcelain white tile. The counters and stuff little bit brown and basic, but they're like Victorian, right? Which is more, I guess, vampire style. This has a piano too. What is with all the pianos in this world? I know, I know there's like bands and stuff, but really grand pianos everywhere. Now the bedroom, why do they have a bedroom? I would really like, it's, I mean, it's not an ugly bedroom, but I would like if this was like a torture room or something, you know, just something to add to his story. Cause he is like the evil vampire. I mean, it's all right. And like thinking about it, they could have really screwed this up. They could have made this have like nothing to do with him or have like a really weird style. Nothing stands out as ugly. And I think overall it's very cohesive, functional and practical for the vampire. I just wish it had a little extra touch of something special. I'm going to give this house an eight. In hindsight, I actually would have really liked that red bathroom in this build because it would have just kind of gone with, you know, blood. It would have made more sense. Next up is Founder's Peace. This guy wants to be a master romancer and he's like a paparazzo. So he likes to take pictures of celebrities and sell them for money. Clearly it's not going too well if he lives here. So let's jump inside and see what his digs are like. Digs are like, I tried to sound cool for one second. This one has like a similar hallway, but you can tell that it's like, not as expensive as the previous one with the red carpet and all that. So I really enjoy that. Coming in, it has the same kind of stone tiles, which again, I like how they do that. The, these buildings are supposed to be twins and the tile is the same, which is very realistic. I'm gonna turn on the light so we can get a better look. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that because now this bathroom is red. Why is there two red bathrooms but neither were for the vampire? Oh, never mind. This is a dark room. That's where he develops his photographs because it just has a sink. I, I thought, why does this bathroom only have a sink? But if you look back here, his real bathroom is more normal. There's a hint of green in this tile, but I mean, it's a practical, functional bathroom. It's not too big and it actually makes sense. But this, this is what I meant. With the vampire room, I wanted something extra special that goes with the sim. This is what I'm looking for. Now, looking at the rest of the build, this is like a very low income bachelor. It's like you have just the essentials, like just a couch and just a bed. And in this kind of build, it works because this is what would, like, this is what it would actually look like. In the other houses, like if I was a millionaire, why why would my dining room not have anything in it? Like I would have like porcelain china, like hanging all over the place. That dark room kind of blew my mind. Like I, I underestimate EA sometimes because they do such horrible things to us. But once in a while, they just give us a little gem and it's probably they don't even realize that they do it. Like those are things that I care about. And like no one probably gave a second thought because a basic bachelor apartment like this would score like a five. But just with that light room detail, I'm gonna give this one a 7.5 because it's the perfect B student apartment. You know, like it's good, nothing amazing, but you can tell they put in some effort and you have to give them credit for it. Next up, we have the Glenview Manor. 
This also has an older style and a similar shape to other apartments that we've seen, but it is a little bit different and it's nice that they break it up so the landscape doesn't get too monotonous. I like these blue awnings. I think it goes really well with the brown. I don't love blue and brown, but I think they go really well together. So that's a nice, that's a nice change. So this is the mother and daughter household. And I know that single parents are something that a lot of simmers love to play. So let's hope the build stacks up. First off, I kind of love the entryway. This is this is kind of this is kind of too pretty for this building, but at least the wallpaper is kind of old fashioned and a little bit ugly. Let's move upstairs to their actual apartment. OK, kind of an interesting shape. It's kind of like long and skinny, but a lot of times apartments end up in weird shapes. You don't notice it because you live inside of it. So like, you know, you don't see it from above. But in The Sims, it's more prominent. But as long as they did it practically, it should be fine. The kitchen is super tiny, but this is like an apartment kitchen. This is how an apartment kitchen would be just kind of slotted in wherever it would fit with just enough to be functional. I actually like the bathroom. They used a bathroom cabinet for the first time this episode. I appreciate that detail. Even digging into the build catalog to find that, I'll give credit for. Now, this bedroom is all right. It's a little bit basic and there's like little bits of red and stuff. So, you know, a little bit of style, a little bit of flowers, but look at this thing. Goodness, what am I supposed to say or do? This is the most outrageous bedroom that we've seen in the whole series now that being said my first thought was well that's fine it's for it's for the teenage girl but no it's for the mother because she's childish right and art and artistic so she would like it's the same with me like there's certain things that i do that are so ugly but that's because i'm creative right like creative people make ugly stuff sometimes it happens by the way don't look at any of my old builds i'm gonna be ashamed but yeah like the glenview manor i kind of like it i like that it's different i like when they kind of break it up because you can tell that with certain builds they just kind of keep copying the same concepts and the same styles or even the same floor plans over and over this gave us a little taste of something different and it was pretty well stylized for being uh, the type of apartment that it is i'm gonna give this one an eight even just coming down inside like again not my style but i really love the layout i think it's very practical i like how the entrance is in the middle and i think it suits the sims that live here so well done Next up is the hieroglyph condos. The first thing I notice is these unusual areas here at the front, but the lot description actually said that it has really weird landscaping. So I think that's what they mean. At least they're being honest. They also called this Egyptian deco. So like art deco, but Egyptian. To be honest, I've never heard of that. So I'm just gonna take their word for it. I know um, the stereotypes of what Egyptian architecture would look like you know, like pyramids. So Jessica Talon, she's a vampire. I actually married her in a Let's Play once. And Raphael, I, I either killed him or I convinced her to leave him. I cannot remember. But he's a human and she's a vampire. So they're like a mixed couple. I love that. There is not a bit of vampire style in this, which is fine because again, since she's married to a human, then it makes sense that they wouldn't necessarily have like the most vampire-y looking place. It's a little small and cramped, but so are a lot of apartments and they've done a lot with it. They kind of, you know, because they actually put stuff places. Now, this kitchen... Two problems. Number one, the only way to get to the bathroom is through the kitchen. And I don't know how I feel about that, especially when there's only one tile here to be getting stuff out of the fridge and stuff. I just think it's going to be impractical for Sims to route them ways around. This sink is not a kitchen sink. It's a bathroom sink. It does not belong in there. And this bathroom has no shower. Let's hope there's a shower upstairs somewhere. But the main problem with this area is just the tiles. There's too many. It's straight through on the floor, straight through to the ceiling. I I think that's lazy and I think it's not stylish when I do a room like this I usually just do like one wall of tiles and then like the rest would just be black paint or something overall I really like how it's two stories I really like the bedroom I don't love the black tiles but I do like this band room even if even if it doesn't make sense and it's it's just like the perfect merge between vampire and human I'm gonna give it a seven I didn't let it influence my ranking, but Jessica Talon is probably my favorite sim in Bridgeport. So I have to, I have to give her some credit. Next up is the land grab brownstone. 
Oh, look at that roof. Here we go. You guys are going to get a little taste of what you're used to. So brownstones are like one of my favorite styles of house. This does not look like a brownstone other than the brown brick. It's too big to be a brownstone. They're usually quite narrow. It does have, I believe, way too many windows, even though I just did an overly windowed Victorian mansion the other day. But yeah, the roof, it like they could have spent five more minutes and made this nice, you know, so that's a bit of an oversight. Let's jump jump in it's our first real big house in a while let's see oh it's a brownstone that's broken up into different apartments okay well that's actually good that's a that's a plus for me because that's how brownstones in big cities usually are usually a very rich family lives in them or like 10 regular families are smushed in there in all these different apartments. So this is about a businesswoman and her daughter who likes reality TV. Okay, jumping inside, I don't love this at all. I see green everywhere. Let's just focus in and go one by one. So the kitchen, of course, has green and yellow tile, which is my favorite, but at least the counters are a good color. They didn't put green and yellow all over the place. So if they wanna have that, I guess I'll forgive it. Again, the parquet flooring, very realistic in these style of houses and apartments. I like how they have a desk without a computer, but they seem to like putting phones at them. I don't like that. I think it should just be like a homework area. But they unfortunately have a gigantic green and yellow bathroom and they have the tile all along the sides. See, that's the problem. In the kitchen, they use the white, so it's all right. But inside of here, it's like too much. Mm. Going into the bedrooms, they both have green carpet. And they're just not really styled. Like, again, like these people are supposed to have all these personalities and all these interests. And it's like, she's supposed to be a comedian. Like, I'm just not seeing comedian vibes in this. Yeah, I think overall, this build was like a little ambitious for how much effort they were willing to put into it. I think they had like a time limit for the roof and like for the shell and stuff. And there was just like not great choices kind of made throughout. And I love brownstones. I was really expecting more. I'm going to give it a four. There's so much more you could have done with this. If you want to see a nice brownstone townhouse, I actually built one in The Sims 4 and I'll link it down below. And last but not least is the Maloney Tower. This one's different from the other ones that we've seen. I kind of like this one as well. This is supposed to be like the old luxury building, but now there's newer luxury buildings overshadowing it. And this girl, she wants to be super popular. She looks super anxious. Wait a minute. Why are we in the basement? Oh, her apartment is in the basement. Okay, this is gonna get some points right away. I know it's ugly and dark, but it's not a mansion. Like it's supposed to be ugly and dark. So we can have a little bit of fun with this one. Ooh, the layout is interesting. So you come down the elevator, you go in this door, and then there's no other doors going into the living and sleeping space. I guess you wouldn't have an ideal situation if you were living like this. So this poor girl, I hope things go well for her. This might be a good kind of rags to riches story storyline if you don't want to start off with like a wall and a toilet on a big empty lot love these like old grungy looking tub and stuff that's like that's exactly what you'd expect to find again like the kitchen looks very improvised i like how the fridge is just in the middle here because there's no other place to put it again in a house i'd be pissed but in this i think it's fine and all the furniture looks old grungy dirty this wall is like covered in newspaper instead of wallpaper like these are thought ideas they're not pretty ideas but they're thought ideas and for the sims that's kind of like half of it like in the sims 4 you need to do stuff like that or else there's no story I was not expecting this and I was not expecting to like something like this. This is very much my style, like making it realistic to the story while not making it hideous that you have to look away. Like I'd rather have that toilet than a green toilet. I'm going to give this one an eight. It probably didn't take too long, but I think every detail is spot on and it just kind of did the trick for me. So that does it for the first half of Bridgeport. What did you guys think? I was pleasantly surprised in some ways and mildly horrified in others but there was nothing that really stood out as atrocious which is a nice change anyway thank you so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed the video if you did give this video a like share it around or subscribe for some more sims 2 and 3 content i'm mostly playing those games and of course we still have tons of worlds to review so this series is going to keep going and don't forget to let me know which world you want to see next